Hey again, this is Jacob Perry back with you for episode 23 in this vlog series on honey, beekeeping, Patagonia, and of course how we're doing business as Patagonia Bee Products uh, and as we get this honey out to all the honey lovers in the United States and even other countries we've been getting orders from. Uh, I'm loving that people are discovering the magical Patagonian honey. Uh, so today I actually want to talk a little bit about the history of honey with one specific uh, look at a culture and how it used honey. And this is something a lot of you have come across in some of your own explorations. Um, a lot of you have heard of the honey that was discovered in an Egyptian tomb and that was still good. And this is a fascinating um, example of the properties of honey and how it can be preserved. And so I'm going to tell you about that. Uh, it was in 1922 that um, an archaeologist was was looking into, was actually excavating King Tut's tomb, right? The pharaoh Tutankhamun. And uh, they discovered these sealed vessels um, in the same tomb with King Tut. And these were believed to, to be, or rather the, the culture at the time, the ancient Egyptians believed that the King Tut would need these certain items in the afterlife. And these items in this case were uh, wine, olive oil, and honey. And they would have writings, transcriptions, imagery on the vessels to, to indicate this. The honey vessels that they found, these little pot, these clay pots, had the word for, um, for honeybee transcribed on kind of the, the handle of the, the vessel. So anyway, um, they busted it open. And I want, you, I want you to put yourself in this, in this archaeologist's shoes. You're finding these, these thousand-year-old, you know, several thousand-year-old uh, vessels with food items. And you think... You know, I'm going to try these, see if they're still good. It's only a couple thousand years old. What's the worst that could happen? Well, <laughs> the olive oil and the wine were spoiled. Uh, they were not good anymore. But the honey was still good. The honey was still good. And this has to do with some of the special properties of honey that I've talked to I've talked about before. And I will share more in future episodes. But basically, uh, the water content is too low in honey for bacteria to grow. And um, if, if it's sealed, right, water uh, honey will pick up water from the environment. So if it's sealed, it won't pick up water. It'll stay good forever quite literally. And uh, so it was, it was, it was totally good. And um, this was an indication, just the fact that these vessels were there is an indication of what honey meant to the, to that uh, ancient Egyptian culture. It was very valued, very prized. Uh, so were olive oil and wine. These weren't things readily available like we have them now. They were hard to get, um, especially with beekeeping. They didn't have modern practices where you could keep reharvesting from the same hive. Usually you had to kill the entire hive to harvest that honey. So you find a hive that's your hive, you harvest the honey, and that's a one-time deal. You know, you don't keep reharvesting and let the bees live. Uh, so, now, you know, another thing that's that's indicative of how precious honey was to the culture, Cleopatra, you know, renowned for her beauty, she was said to be indebted to honey inside and out, meaning she would take honey and milk baths uh, for her skin, for her natural beauty, right? And, uh, and then she would eat honey truffles, and that was supposed to be, you know, for her interior um, cleansing and whatnot. Um... Now, another, another neat detail about how important honey was and the people who harvested the honey, called the sealers of the honey. Uh, every jar that was included in these tombs that they would see had the date of, um, of harvest, the provenance, you know, where it came from, um, and it had the name of the person who took care to seal the jar because that was a very important task, and they were called the, the sealers of honey. All right, super cool, super cool detail. So... Um, uh, you know, another detail that's really important before I forget that is that the Egyptians were some of the first nomadic beekeepers, which means they were able to transport their bees, uh, which is a very hard thing to do uh, without a lot of modern um, knowledge of beekeeping and even, I guess, technology with some of the beehives. But they were able to take their hives up and down the Nile River to the different blooms and get different kinds of honey, uh, which is really incredible for that for that point in time. So I'm going to leave you guys with that a little bit of knowledge about the history of honey with a look at Egyptian culture. Um, and uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you like what you hear and like what you see, uh, we'll keep sending more stuff out. We're trying to make this uh, you know, educational, fun, and uh, enjoyable for everybody. So, um, and, and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get special discounts that way. So signing off, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.